today we begin with the end of the book. Surprised? Or confused? Yes, we begin with the 10th, the last chapter of the book, Footprints Without Feet, the book that saved the earth by Claire Boyko. Now this is part one. There are two parts to this uh, story, this chapter. Uh, it's a pretty long thing, but more than a story, it's a play actually and it's very interesting uh, because it's all about, you know, the aliens trying to capture the planet Earth. So yes, it's really interesting. Let's move on and find out first about the author. And as always, uh, we will know the chapter. So Claire Boyko is known as a published author of children's books. Some of the published credits of Claire Boyko include children's plays for creative actors, a collection of royalty, free plays for boys and girls, dramatized parodies of familiar stories, that's six one act, royal free scripts with original song lyrics set to familiar melodies, the crybaby princes, a play. So a lot of plays written by him, especially for the children and really good and really, I know, I mean, even with uh, the musical ones, really nice. So let's uh, see his, this play, which uh, says the book that saved the earth. It is all about the imaginary world. So yeah, you can, you know, actually imagine when an author is writing, you know, he can just, he has to think out of the box first and foremost to give something unique, to give something different. So this is what he's done. It's all about the imaginary thing where he says the book that saved the earth and how. So the characters of the play are Think Tang, very strange names and you will soon know why. Think Tang, Noodle, Oop, Omega, etc. They are the Martian living beings. Living beings, uh, Martian as in the people living on Mars. Okay. And the time set of the play is the 20th century. So this took place during the 20th century. All the characters reached to a library on earth and misinterpret the books with sandwiches. So they took the books as sandwiches. Now they're aliens. They have no idea, you know, what are books and what are sandwiches. So they take that as sandwiches. Later, they try to understand the rhymes in the book. They felt that they are in danger and immediately left the earth. Hence, a mere children's rhymes book saved the earth from the Martian invasion. Now, this is what he imagines that they came, they saw the book, they found something fishy, something dangerous. And so they left immediately. And this is how, you know, earth was saved. Otherwise, the, uh, the, Mars, the, uh, the Martian invasion would have happened. The play illustrates in detail how the book saved the earth from the Martians invasion. So let's see how it actually saved. And before we move on, let's know the characters of the play. So the characters in this play are historian. That's the name of a character. Great and mighty think tank. Apprentice noodle. Offstage voice. Captain Omega. Lieutenant Iota. Sergeant Oop. Now, these are the characters. Let's see what different types of roles are they playing. So, yes, this is scene one and the time is where? The 25th century. Now, this had happened in the 20th century, but right now they are doing this in the 25th century. Place the Museum of Ancient History, Department of the 20th century on the planet Earth. So, you see now here they, they are showing the Museum of the Ancient History. And it is the department of the 20th century on the planet Earth. That is what they are showing. The, currently it is 25th century, but they are showing the play. Uh, they are putting the setup there of the 20th century. Before rise, spotlight shines on historian who is sitting at a table downright on which is a movie projector. A sign on an easel beside her reads. What's an easel? It's a wooden frame type of thing, you know, to support a blackboard or a picture. So that's your easel. Yeah. So the easel beside her reads Museum of Ancient History, Department of the 20th Century. She stands and bows to the audience. That's how the play 
begins. That's the scene one. So if at all you plan to enact this play, you have it written second by second and all that you have to do is just follow the same. Historian. Now let's go for the dialogues. Good afternoon. Welcome to our Museum of Ancient History and to my department. Curiosities of the good old far off 20th century. So now she's welcoming the audience and she's telling them this is our Museum of Ancient History and my department which is the curiosities of the good old far off 20th century. The 20th century was often called the era of the book. Now those times in those days in the 20th century it was the era of the book. In those days there were books about everything from ant eaters to Zulus books taught people how to and when to and where to and why to. Now there were books based from ant eaters to Zulus. What is what does the word Zulus mean? It is an African ethnic group belonging to South Africa. So basically Anything and everything was there in the books. You could find anything and everything. Whether you wanted to find out how, when, where, why, everything was there. They illustrated, illustrated as in explain or make something clear by using examples or pictures. So this is how they illustrate. So if there's something difficult, you either illustrate, you show it uh, with the help of a picture, an image or you know, explain it properly. So this is how it is. That's how it was done in the books. So the illustrated, educated, punctuated, occurred at intervals, marked the end of eras, you know, different, different eras which were there. This is how they did it, right? And even decorated. This is how uh, the books actually uh, showed, you know, in them. But the strangest thing a book ever did was to save the earth. Now, books did anything and everything apart from saving the earth. You haven't heard about the Martian invasion of 2040, have you? So she's asking the audience, have you ever heard of it? And you know, she's just a sort of a laugh. What do they teach children nowadays? Well, you know, the invasion never really happened because a single book stopped it. So she's trying to tell them, like, see, whatever happened in the past, whatever happened in the history is there in our books and the children are taught. But this children are not taught. Why? Because it did not happen only. It really did not happen because this, a single book stopped it. So otherwise it would have been invaded by the Martians. But because of that one book, the planet Earth was saved. What was the book, you ask? A noble encyclopedia, a tomb about rockets and missiles, a secret file from outer space. No, it was none of these. So she's asking the audience, oh, do you think which the book must be, uh, must have been an encyclopedia? Now we all know what's an encyclopedia. We get any and every information over there. A tomb, it's a large scholarly book about rockets and missiles. Was it that book? No. Was it a secret file from outer space? No. It was none of these books that saved the earth. It was some other book. And which was it? It was... But here, let me turn on the historiscope and show you what happened many centuries ago in 2040. So now she said, before she could speak out, you know, before she could say, which book is she talking about? She says, hold on. Let me put on, let me turn on the historiscope. Historiscope is like a bioscope, yeah? And show you what happened many centuries ago in 2040. She turns on the projector and points it left. Spotlight on historian goes out and now it comes up, down, left on think tank. Who is seated on a raised box, arms folded. Now the projector, you know, the sound, uh, the projector has been switched on and the spotlight, it goes from historian onto the projector where the screen, where they are showing think tank. Now he is seated on a raised box with his arms folded. He has a huge egg shaped head. Who has an egg shaped head? Do you remember? 
Yes, Humpty Dumpty. True, if at all you remember. So yeah, egg-shaped head and he wears a long robe decorated with stars and circles. Apprentice Noodle. Apprentice is who? Learner of a trade who has agreed to work for a certain period of time in return for being taught. So basically, in one word, a trainee. He is learning. He's a learner. So, Apprentice Noodle stands beside him. Beside whom? Think Tank. At an elaborate switchboard. There was a big switchboard over there. So, he's standing there with Think Tank. A sign on an easel reads. Now, there, there was another easel that's a potter. And on that, it was read, Mars Space Control, Great and Mighty Think Tank, Commander in Chief. Bow low before entering. Now, here, uh, who was he? The think tank was who? He was the commander in chief. And you call him great and mighty think tank. That's how he used the adjectives in front of his name. So yeah, as soon as they enter, uh, they're there. They bow low before entering. Now, noodle, bowing. Oh, great and mighty think tank, most powerful and intelligent creature in the whole universe. What are your orders? Now remember, he's an apprentice, so he's supposed to take orders from the commander-in-chief. So, Think Tank, peevishly, a little irritated. You left out part of my salutation. Salutation was what? The gesture or the utterance made as a greeting or acknowledgement of another's arrival or departure. So basically, you know, when you enter, when you greet, you know, that's sort of a salutation. Or basically when you're bidding a goodbye. So either of the times. So you left out part of my salutation. Apprentice Noodle, go over the whole thing again. He says, you did not greet me properly. You missed out something. So redo it. Do it again. It shall be done, sir, in a sing song. Oh, great and mighty think tank, ruler of Mars and her two moons, most powerful and intelligent creature in the whole universe, out of breath. What are your orders? You know, so he says that whole thing in one breath at a stretch and finally he runs out of breath and he says, what are your orders? So he had missed ruler of Mars and her two moons. So, you know, Think Tank made him say it again. That's better, Noodle. He says, ah, now you're sounding better. Now you're sounding correct. Think Tank. I wish to be placed in communication with our manned space probe to that ridiculous little planet we are going to put under our generous rulership. What do they call it again? Uh, you know, he's a little confused. So he's asking, you know what? I want to get communicated. I want to get connected with our manned space probe. You know, you have this space elaboration. You want to get connected. Now, he wants to get connected to Earth. Yes, to that ridiculous little planet. That's what he calls Earth. But remember, this is all in the imaginary world. So, yeah, enjoy it. Enjoy someone else's imagination. So, to that ridiculous little planet, we are going to put under our generous rulership. We are going to invade. We are going to rule that planet. So, yes, connect me to it. What do they call it? He says, oh, I forgot the name. What do you call it? Come again. And he says, Earth, your intelligence. That planet is called Earth. Earth, of course. You see how insignificant the place is? It's not even really important. That's why I don't remember the name. But first, something important. My mirror. I wish to consult my mirror. He says, okay, forget that. That's not really important. But before anything, please get me my mirror because I want to consult the mirror. I want to take an advice. It shall be done, sir. He hands Think Tank a mirror. Now, while am I, I am reading this, please go on visualizing it. Yes? Think Tank, mirror, mirror in my hand. Who is the most fantastically, intellectually gifted being in the world? You know, that one says mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the most prettiest one of them all? Likewise, he says, mirror, mirror in my hand. Who is the most fantastically, intellectually gifted being in the land? An offstage voice, after a pause, 
use a think tank smacking the mirror you know you slightly hit that mirror answer quicker next time i hate a slow mirror he admires himself in the mirror he says oh you were too slow to answer make sure you reply you know quickly the next time i hate to wait so yes and then he starts looking in the mirror and admiring himself think tank ah there i am are we martians not a handsome race or don't you think we are really really very handsome so much more attractive than those ugly earthlings with their tiny heads you remember he has the nice big oval egg shaped head so he feels the earthling the people on the earth are really ugly why because they have a tiny head noodle you keep on exercising your mind and some day you'll have a balloon brain just like mine so he's telling noodle you better keep sure you know you better make sure that you are exercising your mind make sure to do some nice mental exercises so that you have a big brain a balloon brain just like mine noodle oh i hope so mighty think tank i hope so says i hope i become as you know smart and intelligent like you now contact the space probe now get the connection done to the earth i want to invade that primitive ball of mud called earth before lunch says get me the connection soon i want to rule i want to invade it i want to capture the earth you know and what he calls earth primitive as in a very old very ancient ancient ball of mud called earth and i want to capture it before lunch so here you have the primitive it is relating to or denoting a pre literate non industrial society or culture characterized by simple social and economic organization so in short ancient yes because these things did not exist so it was ancient so yeah he says i want to capture that earth before lunch noodle it shall be done sir he adjusts levers on the switchboard you know you have that switchboard and he makes those sounds electronic buzzes and beeps are heard as the curtains open now again as the curtains open the other side you can hear electronic buzzes and beeps so while he is adjusting those levers this is how it is done and the sounds come to give the effect moving on to scene 2 now that concludes your scene 1 now time a few seconds later place mars space control and the center wheel public library so you have the mars space control there on top and on earth you have the center wheel public library at rise that means when the curtain rises captain omega stands at the center opening and closing card catalog drawers in a confused fashion so in there was a drawer in which there were card catalogs so he was very confused about it and he kept doing that in a very confused fashion lieutenant iota is up left counting books in a bookcase now he was sitting and counting the books there was a bookcase sergeant oop is at right opening and closing a book turning it upside down he is trying to figure out the book shaking it and riffling the pages and shaking his head riffling the pages as in he was quickly turning over the pages of a book and shaking his head so he was trying to discover or find out what is that noodle adjusting the knobs i have a close sighting of the space crew sir think tank puts on a pair of enormous goggles and turns towards the stage to watch they seem to have entered some sort of earth structure now his crew has gone to the earth remember they wanted to invade they wanted to capture so he has sent some of his aliens some of his crew i must say so yes he he is saying you know what i have a close sighting noodle is telling him i can see a very close thing of the space crew sir and then he puts on his glasses and he looks at the stage uh in front and they seem to have entered some sort of earth structure some place of the earth they have entered think that excellent make voice contact he says now i need to talk to them so make voice contact noodle speaking into a microphone 
Mars Space Control calling the crew of Probe 1. Mars Space Control calling the crew of Probe 1. Come in, Captain Omega, and give us your location. Now, he's trying to connect. He's trying to talk to them. And he's telling Captain, uh, Captain Omega to give us the location. Omega, speaking into a disc which is on a chain around her neck. Now, there was a disc onto the chain which was around her neck. So, she... Uh, returns or you know she answers back she replies back captain omega to mass space control lieutenant iota sergeant oop and i have arrived on earth without incident without incident as in safely we have taken shelter in this square place now this uh, square place as in here it's the room shelter you know place that is shielded or in safe condition and offers protection so they have taken shelter there in that square place, which is a room basically. Have you any idea where we are, Lieutenant Iota? Says, do you know what this place is called? Iota, I can't figure it out, Captain. I have no idea what this place is called. Holding up a book, I've counted 2,000 of these peculiar items. He says, I have counted 2,000 of these, the books. He says, peculiar as in, for him, it's very strange. He does not know what it is. So he says, I've counted 2,000 of them. Iota, this place must be some sort of strange barn. Barn is a covered building for storing hay. Now, generally they store hay in that. That's why they call it barn. So he says, maybe it is some sort of a storage barn. What do you think, Sergeant Oop? He's asking Oop. Now, do you think that's the case? Oop, I haven't a clue. Even I have no idea. I've been to seven galaxies, but I've never seen anything like this. This is one of a kind. I have not, I have been to different, seven different galaxies, but I have not come across anything like this. Maybe they are hats. Now that's what they call it, the books. He opens a book and he puts it on his head. So when you open a book and you keep it, you know, it becomes like a hat. Uh, say maybe this is a haberdashery. What is a haberdashery? It is a shop which sells clothing, small articles of dress, pins, cotton, etc. So it says maybe this is a haberdashery. So now they're trying to figure out what this place is called. Omega, bowing low. Perhaps the great and mighty think tank will give us the benefit of his thought on the matter. He says maybe now, you know, our great commander in chief will throw some light, will let us know what exactly is this place? Think tank. Elementary, my dear Omega. Elementary means relating to the basic elements of a subject. Hold one of the items up so that I may view it closely. He says, hold it properly on top. Let me zoom and see what is it exactly. I want to see it closely. Omega holds a book on the palm of her hand. Yes, yes, I understand now. Since earth creatures are always eating, the place in which you find yourselves is undoubtedly a crude refreshment stand. He says, you know what? These earth people are always eating most of the time. They're all foodies. <laughs> is that what he meant? So he says, Wait, you know where you people are standing right now? It's like a crude ref refreshment stand. Now you will get things to eat over there. Omega, to Iota and Oop, he says we are in a refreshment stand. That's what, you know, Think Tank tells us. Oop, well, the earthlings certainly have a strange diet. Says this is what they eat. Their diet is definitely very strange. Think Tank, that item in your hand is called a sandwich. Now, so you see a book, you know, it has the uh, the cover page and you have the first, the last, you know, the binded books so all the last covers and in between you have the pages so he calls it it resembles a sandwich so he calls it a sandwich think tank takes it for a sandwich omega nodding a sandwich iota a sandwich oop taking the book from his head a sandwich think tank sandwiches are the main staple of earth diet staple as in the main or the important especially in terms of consumption we say you now what is the staple food of kerala 
Likewise, so what is the main food of the earth? What's the main food of the diet? Uh, the diet that they eat. Look at it closely. Omega squints at the book. What do you mean? How does he, you know how you squint like this? He looks at something with one or both eyes partly closed in an attempt to see more clearly or as a reaction to strong light. Like that he does, you know. He squints at the book. There are two slices of what is called bread and between them is some sort of filling. So the filling is what? The pages and the upper and the lower ends of the books are what? They are the slices of bread. Omega. That is correct, sir. Well, this is the story which is to be continued in part two. But I'm sure by now you've, you're really enjoying it because even I am. So yes, very soon we shall meet up in part two. So stay tuned. So here we are, part two of the book that saved the earth. Now you remember the conclusion, uh, the concluding segment of part one, where Think Tank tells them that those books are sandwiches. And they are like, oh, this is a very strange thing. So let's move on. The story goes on. Think Tank, to confirm my opinion, I order you to eat it. He says, I want to make sure that what I've said is correct. So I order you all to eat it. Omega gulping. He did that. Eat it? Think Tank, do you doubt the mighty Think Tank? Are you doubting what I'm saying? He says, oh, no, 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 no. But poor Lieutenant Iota has not had her breakfast. Lieutenant Iota, I order you to eat this, this sandwich. Now he's putting the monkey on her shoulders. Says, I know, but you know what? She hasn't taken her breakfast, so let her have it. Iota, dubiously, in a way that arouses suspicion, distrust or uncertainty. She's like, me? Eat it? Oh, Captain. It's a very great honor to be the first Martian to eat a sandwich. I'm sure. But, but how can I be so impolite to eat before my sergeant? Handing Oop the book and saying brightly, Sergeant Oop, I order you to eat the sandwich immediately. Now she plays her cards very well. Now she did not want to do that. So she passed it over to Oop saying that, oh, he is my sergeant. How can I eat before him? Let him do the honors. Oop, making a face. Who, Lieutenant? Me, Lieutenant? He's asking, oh, you're telling me? Iota and Omega saluting. For the glory of Mars. Oop, go for it. Oop, yes, of course. Unhappily. Immediately, he opens his mouth wide. Omega and Iota watch him breathlessly. He bites down on a corner of the book and pantomimes chewing and swallowing while making terrible faces. Pantomimes as in he expresses or represents by exaggerated mime. He's like, um, you know, he's doing that and he's making faces and he's chewing and swallowing. Omega, well, oop. So is it a sandwich? Iota, well, oop. Oop coughs, Omega and Iota pound him on the back. They start patting him on the back because he starts coughing. Now that's not a sandwich, they're eating a book. Think Tank, was it not delicious, Sergeant Oop? Wasn't that uh, sandwich really tasty? Oop saluting, that is correct, sir. It was not delicious. I don't know how the earthlings can get those sandwiches down without water. They are dry as Martian dust. They say it's so dry. How can they have it? I'm sure there's, there's nothing pasty. There's nothing liquid. So they, they cannot have those sandwiches, you know, without water. How can you gulp it down? And this is as dry as the dust that we have on Mars. Noodle. Sir, sir, great and mighty think tank. I beg your pardon. But an insignificant bit of data floated into my mind about those sandwiches. He says, I have some data about those sandwiches that you're talking about. I just got that bit of data that just came to my mind. Think Tank, it can't be worth much, but go ahead. Give us your trifling bit of data. Trifling as an unimportant or trivial. It's not really, it doesn't even matter. But okay, since you're saying it, go ahead. Let us know about it. 
Well, sir, I have seen surveyor films of those sandwiches. What do you mean by surveyor films? Made with the intent of examining or inspecting something here, earth. So now I have seen those films of those sandwiches. I noticed that the earthlings did not eat them. So while he was watching the film, he must have seen those books and the earthlings were not eating them, definitely. They use them as some sort of communication device. He says it is not something edible. It is not something to eat. In fact, they used it as some communication. They wanted to, you know, write something on it. It's a communication device. Think tank, haughtily, you know, very sort of disobediently because he does not obey. So he's just giving that haughty look naturally. That was my next point. These are actually communication sandwiches. Think tank is never wrong. Who is never wrong? All saluting great and mighty think tank is never wrong. Now, you know, he gets that idea from noodle. So he's like, I was just telling the same thing. That was my next point. I was going to tell you the same thing that these are communication sandwiches. So he says, oh, I am never wrong. And he's asking them, he says, of course, you're never wrong. Think tank, therefore, I order you to listen to them. Now it's a device. So you must listen to them. Omega, listen to them. What? Listen to what? Iota and Oop to each other puzzled. Listen to them. They're both looking at each other confused. That what do we listen to? Think tank, do you have marbles in your ears? I said, listen to them. Martians bow very low. Are you crazy? Your ears are blocked. I'm telling you, listen to them. Simple. And these guys bow down. They say, okay. Omega, it shall be done, sir. They each take two books from the case and hold them to their ears, listening intently. You know, with great seriousness and concentration, they took two books near their ears and they are listening. Iota, whispering to Omega, do you hear anything? Omega, whispering back, nothing. Do you hear anything, Oop? Oop, not a thing. Omega and Iota jump in fright. Omega and Iota, shh. They listen intently again. Think tank, well, well, report to me. What do you hear? And Omega says, nothing, sir. Perhaps we are not on the correct frequency. They say, maybe the frequency is not matching. We are unable to hear anything from these sandwiches. Iota, nothing, sir. Perhaps the earthlings have sharper ears than we do. Sharper as in having or showing better perception, comprehension or response. So maybe they can hear way better than us. So if they can hear, we cannot. Oop, I don't hear a thing. Maybe these sandwiches don't make sounds. Now, somewhere a little sense it's making. Think tank, what? Does somebody suggest the mighty think tank has made a mistake? Are you people trying to tell me that I have made a mistake by telling you to listen to them? Omega, oh no, sir, no, sir. We'll keep listening. He says, no, 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 don't worry. We are listening. We'll keep listening. Noodle, please excuse me, your brilliance, but a cloudy piece of information is twirling around in my head. A cloudy piece as in something uncertain, something really unclear. Some piece of information is going on in my head. Think tank, well, twirl it out, Noodle, and I will clarify it for you. He says, okay, fine, share it with me and I will tell you exactly what it is. Noodle, I seem to recall that the earthlings did not listen to the sandwiches. They opened them and they watched them. Now what I am getting as per, in, you know, what I am getting the thought is that these earthlings do not listen to these sandwiches. They open and they watch them. They look at the sandwiches. Think tank, yes, that is quite correct. I will clarify that for you. Captain Omega, those sandwiches are not for your communication. They are for eye communication. Now he is so egoistic. He does not want to say that he's wrong. So he's continuously attaching the word communication to everything. He says, ah, that's not for the ear. The communication is not for the ear. It's for the eyes. So they are for eye communication. Think tank. Now, Captain Omega, 
Take that large colorful sandwich over there. It appears to be important. Tell me what you observe. He says, okay, now you look at that tall, large, colorful. Now that was the book he saw. Uh, sandwich, sorry. <laughs> According to them. So it appears to be important. Tell me what you observe. Omega picks up a very large volume of Mother Goose, holding it so that the audience can see the title. You know, puts it up like this. Iota looks over her left shoulder and Oop peers over her right shoulder. He peers as in looks with difficulty and concentration at something. He's trying to look at it. Omega, it appears to contain pictures of earthlings. Now there are pictures of these earthlings. Earthlings are the people living on earth. Iota, there seems to be some sort of code. You know, there is some code in, hidden in these pictures. Think tank, sharply interested. Code? I told you this was important. Describe the code. He says, oh, is that a code? Quickly describe it to me. Oop. It's little lines and swiggles and dots. Thousands of them alongside the pictures. Now he says, it's little lines. It's written in lines and, and squiggles. What are they? They are scrawls or illegible writing or markings. Now basically it was writing, but for them it was illegible because they could not understand and dots, dots are full stops. Thousands of them alongside the pictures. Think tank, perhaps the earthlings are not as primitive as we have thought. We must break the code. Says, you know what, these earthlings are not very ancient. We took them for granted. We thought, oh, they know nothing. But we must break that code there. They seem to be really clever. Noodle, forgive me your cleverness, but did not the chemical department give our space people vitamins to increase their intelligence? He says, don't you think uh, the chemical department did not give us enough vitamins so that we could increase our intelligence? Think tank, stop. A thought of magnificent brilliance has come to me. He says, I have got the most beautiful thought. Wait. Space people, our chemical department has given you vitamins to increase your intelligence. Take them immediately and then watch the sandwich. The meaning of the code will slowly unfold before you. He says those vitamins which were given to you by the space department, by the chemical department, have it immediately and this code will get uncoded or rather decoded. It will unfold as in gradually develop or be revealed. You will be able to understand what are they trying to say? What is, the, what is there in that code? Omega, it shall be done, sir. Remove vitamins. Crew takes the vitamins from the boxes on their belts. Present vitamins, they hold the vitamins out in front of them stiffly, you know, very stiffly. Swallow vitamins, they pop the vitamins into their mouths and they gulp simultaneously. All of them do it. They open their eyes wide, their heads shake, and they put their hands to their foreheads. Now that is the reaction that happens after gulping those medicines, vitamins. Think tank, excellent. Now decipher that code. Decipher as in find the meaning of something which is puzzling or difficult to understand. He says, now you all decipher it. Now you all have taken the vitamins. It shall be done, sir. They frown over the book, turning pages. They are like, you know, going through the book, all of them. Omega, brightly, aha, and you know, something clicks there. Iota, oh ho, and oop, ha ha ha. So all of them have different expressions. Think tank, what does it say? Tell me this instant. Transcribe, Omega. Sis, what is it trying to say? Quickly tell me. Write in full form from shorthand. He says, Stop giving me these shorthands. Tell me properly in detail what do they mean. Omega. Yes, sir. She reads with great seriousness. Mistress Mary, quite contrary. How does your garden grow? With cockle shells and silver bells and pretty maids all in a row. Cockle shells, you know, these are those invertebrates. So they, when they grow, they have those snails, octopuses. It's those type of shells. Oop. Ha ha ha. Imagine that. Pretty maids growing in a garden. Now they are shocked, you know, they are finding it very strange. 
think tank alarmed he says stop this is no time for levity levity is what tendency to treat serious matters without respect or lack of seriousness he's saying here things are so serious and you guys are making fun just stop it don't you realize the seriousness of this discovery now what have they discovered they basically just read a rhyme it was mother goose book so it was full of rhymes so they are reading the rhymes and they are decoding it yeah the earthlings have discovered how to combine agriculture and mining says oh my god they can do two things simultaneously they can actually grow crops of rare metals such as silver and cockle shells they can grow high explosives too noodle contact our invasion fleet now he is you know just getting to the bottom of the rhyme which actually means something else but they are decoding it in their manner he says he's telling noodle his you know apprentice contact our invasion fleet they are ready to go down and take over earth sir he's saying they are absolutely ready they are, they can just go down and do the needful noodle they are ready to go down and take over earth sir he says that once again think tank tell them to hold tell them new information has come to us about earth iota transcribe he says wait there is one more information which has come tell them to wait not to leave yes sir she reads very gravely very seriously hey diddle diddle the cat and the fiddle the cow jumped over the moon the little dog laughed to see such sport and the dish ran away with the spoon now basically that's just a rhyme and oop laughing the dish ran away with the spoon i mean how is it possible so they don't know that they are reading rhymes think tank cease laughter stop laughing desist stop doing something just stop it immediately this is more and more alarming this is very scary you all stop laughing there the earthlings have reached a high level of civilization did you hear they have taught their domesticated animals tame and kept as a pet or on a farm musical culture and space techniques now why is he saying that because you see the cat and the fiddle the cow jumped over the moon so he is saying you know they are teaching them space techniques and even musical techniques the little dog laughed to see such sport so he is talking of all the domesticated animals even their dogs have a sense of humor why at this very moment they may be launching an interplanetary attack of millions of cows the cow jumped over the moon that line so now he's saying oh my god so if one has learned all have learned and maybe they are launching an interplanetary attack yeah of millions of cows notify the invasion fleet no invasion today oop transcribe the next code he says today no invasion stop them keep telling me all the information oop yes sir reading Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall Humpty Dumpty had a great fall all the king's horses and all the king's men cannot put Humpty Dumpty together again now do you know what was the reaction of this rhyme now Humpty Dumpty so you know that head was resembling that of think tank oop oh look sir here's a picture of Humpty Dumpty why sir he looks like he looks like and he turns the large picture of humpty dumpty towards think tank and the audience remember think tank had an oval face so this was exactly like him think tank screaming and holding his head it's me it's my great and mighty balloon brain the earthlings have seen me and they are after me had a great fall that means they plan to conquer mars central control and me it's an invasion of mars he says oh my god they have known me they have seen me and now they are after mars they are going to come and capture mars that is what they feel now we know humpty dumpty the character of the poem right think tank noodle prepare a space capsule for me i must escape without delay space people you must leave earth at once but be sure to remove all traces of your visit the earthlings must not know that i know 
Omega, Iota and Oop rush about putting books back on shelves. Suddenly, he gets panicky. He's telling Noodle, you quickly take out my space capsule. I must escape from here before they come and capture me. And he tells all his people over there who were there, please leave Earth at once. But before you leave, make sure that these guys don't come to know that you had been there. Not a single trace, mark, object or other indication of existence or passing of something. Make sure nothing is visible to them. Everything is as it was. Noodle, where shall we go, sir? Think time, a hundred million miles away from Mars. Order the invasion fleet to evacuate the entire planet of Mars. Evacuate as in leave a place of imminent danger. There is too much of danger here in Mars. Right now, everybody leave. We are heading for Alpha Centauri, a hundred million miles away. Alpha Centauri is the closest star system and planetary system to our solar system. So it is another star system basically and he says we are going there. Omega, Iota and Oop run off right as Noodle helps Think Tank off left and the curtain closes. Spotlight shines on Historian down right. It's back to Historian who had started and chuckling, she's laughing a bit. And that's how one dusty old book of nursery rhymes saved the world from a Martian invasion. That book actually saved the planet Earth, otherwise Mars would have captured it. As you all know, in the 25th century, 500 years after all this happened, we Earthlings resumed contact with Mars and we even became very friendly with the Martians. We started getting contact and we became friendly with them. By that time, great and mighty Think Tank had been replaced by a very clever Martian, the wise and wonderful Noodle. So yes, Think Tank was replaced by Noodle. Oh yes, we taught the Martians the difference between sandwiches and books, which they did not know. We taught them how to read. We also taught them to read and we established a model library in their capital city of Marsopolis. Marsopolis, its typical structure of community defined as administrative and religious city center. So yes, there was a model library that came up there, but as you might expect, there is still one book that the Martians can never bring themselves to read. You remember which one? You've guessed it, Mother Goose. She bows and exits right. She says everything happened. The Martians, they learned, you know, from the earthlings, the difference between a book and a sandwich. They even got a library out there and they got all books over there, except the one Mother Goose. And why was it? We all know that's the reason the whole episode actually took place. So wasn't that really a wonderful piece of imagination? A little knowledge is a dangerous thing. It only hastens fools to rush in where angels fear to tread. Very well put up by Samuel Johnson. So he says little knowledge is dangerous. See, when you don't know the entire story about the whole thing, never come to conclusions. This is what, you know, the think tank did. This is what he did, right? He did not know the entire, he did not have the entire knowledge, I mean, of the whole earth. Yeah, he got stuck on that book and then how the whole story happened. Beat the same thing to us. For us, we should make sure that whenever we jump into anything, whenever we are, you know, talking of anything or referring to anything, we need to have the knowledge of the whole thing. We need to have every minute detail of the same. See, otherwise half knowledge is dangerous. Little, like he says, little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Either you don't have it or you have it fully. Only that can keep you safe. Exactly like you are getting the entire knowledge from virtually, so don't worry, it is definitely not dangerous. Yes, you're very safe for the same. Keep watching and keep learning.